Hello, and welcome back to Astral Codex's channel. This is a short guide on Dragon Fable's Technomancer class. Technomancer is a powerful hybrid class that combines a good heal and shield with damage that ramps up as its MP gets lower. The class can be acquired from Yix in Book 1 Pop Sprocket. Technomancer has two mechanics, Heat and Drive Boost. Every turn, Technomancer builds one stack of heat and then loses MP equal to its heat level. Heat starts at 0 stacks and caps at 20 stacks. You can reset the stacks of heat to 0 by using the Vent Heat skill. Technomancer's Drive Boost increases the total damage of every offensive skill by 2% for each 1% of your missing MP. For example, at 50% MP, every skill gets 100% more damage. At 0% MP, every skill gets 200% more damage. Note, however, that Drive Boost will be disabled for 3 turns if your Wiz changes by more than 1 fifth of your level. At level 90, this occurs if your Wiz changes by more than 18. This is meant to give you some leeway in gear swapping while discouraging you from using minus Wiz swap, that is, entering the battle with lower negative Wiz gear, swapping to high Wiz gear, and thus immediately starting every fight with high drive boost. Technomancer's Drive Boost means the key to effective gameplay is to keep your mana as low as possible while still being high enough to use your skills. For questing, you can simply allow your MP to get low over multiple fights, thereby increasing your damage. Use Force Sword or Event Horizon for solo fights, and Static Overload Blast for multis. Use Mana Eruption when you run out of mana. For bossing, the main damage comes from stacking Tog Drone Tracking and Event Horizon. The key rotation is the following. First, use Tog Drone Tracking, then Enhanced Metallic Aging and Event Horizon. Follow this up with three damage skills, Photon Bow, Force Sword, and then Mana Burst Grenades. This 6 turn rotation maximizes damage, but can be shortened when necessary by swapping the order of Horizon and Aging and then removing Photon Bow. Reactive Barrier can also be added between Tog and Horizon for more survivability. When the boss has 100 or less immobility resist, two of the offense skills can be replaced by the stun skills for even more survivability. When Tog is down, use Reactive Barrier and Magnetic Resonance Protocol to survive. Strategic use of Mana Eruption, Vent Heat, and MP Potions should be used to maintain your MP at a low level. Vent Heat can also be used to negate enemy healing. Overclock assists with both survivability and damage. Not only does it reduce the cooldown on Tog Drone tracking, it allows for powerful defensive combinations, such as Reactive Barrier into Resonance Protocol and to Overclock into Reactive Barrier. At level 90, you generally want to use 200 Intelligence or 200 Dexterity, 200 Endurance, and then some combination of Luck, Wisdom, and Charisma for the remaining 45 points. Int is generally used as the main stat due to Tog Drone Trackings plus Crit and the fact that Force Sword is a high damage auto crit. Dex is also an option due to the high damage and high uptime aging DOT. 200 End is useful for survivability and immobility resist. 45 Wiz is used for more sustain in longer fights. For shorter fights, a split between Luck and Charisma is generally optimal for faster damage ramp up. The primary strength of this class is its high damage after Drive Boost ramp up, combined with decent defenses and sustain. A full Tog Horizon rotation at low MP can easily do over 7,000 damage on average, while the class's decent healing and low cooldown shield help you survive while Tog is not up. In addition, the class also has high plus bonus uptime from Tog and Static, allowing it to partially ignore shields, and Event Heat with full stacks can entirely negate an enemy's healing for three whole turns. However, its primary weakness is a lack of damage before it fully ramps up. You can always try turtling behind shields and heals, but turtling doesn't help versus bosses that ramp up quickly. It also only has Reactive Barrier as a damage mitigation skill, 
This can fail versus bosses that have high bonus or that apply minus MPM. That being said, these two weaknesses are small compared to its strengths, leaving it one of the best classes in Dragon Fable. This concludes the Technomancer Guide. For a more in-depth explanation about how the skills and passives work, check out the links in the description. What are your thoughts about Technomancer? What classes or topics would you like to see guides for next? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching, and good luck!